they're generally just nice. I mean, there's nobody who's ever died of a manatee attack, and they're giant, lumbering, funny-looking animals. My name is Grant Eady, and I make electronic music as Manatee Commune. We're here in Bellingham, Washington. So I make chill wave electronic music, um, sampling viola, guitar, um, and as many soft synthesizers as I can use. Um, use a lot of atmospheric sounds and some hip hop beats. There's a ridiculous amount of like um, very intelligent youth here that are like fiending for um, mental stimulus for the most part. Just people being bored enough that they they just play shows for each other. It seems like everybody's always kind of trying to shine for the most part, like do something fresh that makes them who they are. Everybody's dabbling in these weird different paths to see what it's like. Tons of friends go into like the punk scene for like a minute just to check it out and then they come back and they're like, I'm not sure why I did that, but it was worth it, I think. I think Bellingham is an incubator in that sense because art can just, it can just thrive. I just watched this like gif or gif or whatever you want to call it of a manatee making contact with the glass of its um, enclosure. It was like its nose getting all scrunched up and I thought it was super cute. I liked manatees. I wanted to do something that paid homage to Animal Collective and I was really high in my dorm room. <laughs> Yeah, so my live set right now is guitar, viola, drums. I can loop my viola. I don't usually loop my guitar, but I have the potential. Um, and then I run just Ableton Live and I launch scenes. When I initially started making music for live setting, it was like, I'm gonna put people in this cerebral space and like, they're gonna start thinking about their lives and they're gonna set down their drinks and they're gonna sit on the floor and think about what they're doing and like, that was so naive, it was so naive. Cause I've been there, I've been that guy like standing in the audience watching like a really cerebral show and thought, I don't wanna be here. <laughs> and that's when I realized I was like, man, I'm not having fun trying to put people into a space that they don't wanna be in. They know what they want, I know what they want. I'm gonna do it my own way and see what they think. And usually that ends up going really well. All right, so, uh... We're going to South by Southwest in Austin, Texas. This is uh, first time in South by Southwest, first time in Texas, and my second show ever in, out of state. So I'm just bringing viola, launch pad, APC, not even a table, because I can't even bring that on the plane. So I'm just bringing these three things. We're at South by Southwest um, at the midfield, at the Midway Fieldhouse. <laughs> Playing a show here in about half an hour. Should be fun. I never flew my shit down here before, so like, naturally thinking my case would just like fly open. I locked it, which is a huge mistake. Because TSA was like, there's a fucking bomb in this shit. And so they, they like broke it open in front of me. I saw it happen. They like took a couple hammers. And the guy was like, Fuck, just like fucking broke the thing open. So like half my shit's like bent up and like messed up and stuff. But what are you gonna do, you know? I wish the process of writing music for me personally was more formulaic, but unfortunately it's very random and very like happenstance, very like, um, well this just happened to work today and I happened to drink the right amount of coffee and I, you know, I happened to have like a good experience the day before or something like that. I have all these ideas and then I kind of like, I put them into different places and then I fill them all out with like different samples and different ideas and stuff like that. So it's like, there's kind of a skeletal structure and then I put stuff in it. Like as I get, more in the electronic scene, I'm, I become so much more excited about genres and like 
people putting me in a box because if they do, then they understand what's happening and they can, you know, come to shows and have a good time. Basically, when you, when you do a performance with a live instrument, you've practiced. And when you go up and you play music, like on a guitar or viola or violin or cello or something, you're essentially just pressing play in your head and your, your hands are just doing it for you. And people think like, wow, that's really impressive. Like, look at all, like, all the practice he put in. And that is true. But like, um, when somebody press, presses play on their tracks, people see it as like, oh, he's just pressing play. But nobody says like, wow, think about the amount of hours it took him to work on that song, you know? And I always think that's really wild because I mean, you don't have to think that way. It's, it's totally fabricated just because you can do the same thing with iTunes doesn't mean he's doing the same thing up on stage. Um, I mean, it took me the same amount of hours to figure out how to use all the freaking, all these buttons and stuff, all these weird things. It took me the same amount of hours to learn how to use that stuff than it did to learn how to play viola. I just, the reason why I play live instruments when I play live is because it's way more gratifying. It is way more gratifying for me personally. And that's that's just a personal preference. That's not like me being um, elitist and saying like, I need to have instruments in my set because I'm a real musician. It's just because that's the way I learned how to play music was, was playing viola, playing guitar, playing piano, playing drums, playing whatever on stage. I could totally see where somebody would be like, you know, I've spent hours learning how to use this specific APC patch. And somebody looks at it and they're like, well, he's just pressing buttons. He's just pressing play on all these different elements. And then somebody comes up to him after the show and they're like, well, you're just, you know, doing, you're just playing. You, you weren't really playing anything. And he thinks like, well, I spent so many hours like working on that APC patch. Like, what have I been doing then? And so, I don't know. That's a dumb argument. <laughs> We're here at the Wild Buffalo in Bellingham, Washington, my hometown. I'm opening up for Blockhead. So we have laptop running Ableton Live, and then I have my audio interface, which is running Firewire, which I like to use more because it's a higher, faster sample rate. APC, which is launching clips, has effects. My launch pad, which is also launching clips. I have it programmed through a lot of other things on this side. Drums, viola, guitar, amplifier. Pretty simple. I've been to quite a few places and I haven't found a spot that is nearly as special. The people here and the nature here and the culture here are just things that I love and like things that I want to continue. That's it. That's how you do it. <laughs>